My life will come to an end. Like tonight is definitely a little spooky out here. I don't know about you, but I just need to know where my edges are. Man, I've been really enjoying spinach, cooked spinach. I just kind of feel like I'm on edge a little and mousse seems to be on edge a little bit too. Yeah, like what was that noise right there? All right, I think it's time for Joy Box. If you know what this is, leave it in the comments. I'm constantly wondering, where is my edge? Have I lost my edge? In this world of everything is easy, everything is quick, how do I keep my edge? How do I keep from being soft? Soft-minded, soft body, settling. Because I know that I'm on a trail and there's a cliff at the end of the trail. And if I know there's an end in sight, my life will come to an end. The more aware I am of that, the more I'm gonna live each day with that edge in mind. Living each day to the fullest, thinking of my death every day. Now, even though I know that I have an eternal home in heaven, right? That's rock solid for me. I don't worry about dying, but I do think about how I'm living each day to the fullest, to my edge. This is a very silly, maybe simple edge, but this dress I have on, it just makes me happy. But I tend to dress practical and I dress for other people. I dress for my work, of course, but if I was to dress like I didn't care what anybody thought of me every day, I'd probably dress like this. And that's an edge. I just thought I would bring this up tonight as I cook on the fire. So if you'd like to join me. All right, I've got some goodies tonight for dinner. Got a beautiful fire. We are having just incredible weather. It's crazy. So I was like, you know what? I'm putting on this dress and I'm gonna play Pioneer Woman. <laughs> Cause it just, I don't know. All right. This is what we got. I know it seems a little weird, but I've got spinach and a piece of sockeye salmon. Isn't that gorgeous? So we're gonna do some aluminum foil salmon and I'm gonna put Cajun seasoning on it. We're gonna do it right on the fire. That's just beautiful fish. That is Alaskan sockeye salmon. It is my favorite. And I just love putting like Cajun seasoning on. It just makes for a beautiful, beautiful dinner. I'll just do that and put that on the fire. In full disclosure, I'm having a beer with my salmon tonight. Also an Alaskan beer. Pickaxe from the Keweenaw Brewing Company. It is a blonde ale, but I'd have that with dinner tonight. This wind doesn't know what it wants to do. It's all over the place. Amazing how warm it is. Holy cow. Had to go to the city the other day for an errand. And I was just struck by how clean and organized and tidy everything was. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I just thought that I kind of didn't fit in there got me thinking about just how far we've come from say the pioneer days which 
I know there's been a lot of really, really good things. But I also feel like all this comfort, all of the things that we have so easily now, makes us weak. Like, it was a big deal this week when AT&T phones went out. My phone went out. I have AT&T, so I woke up not knowing why I didn't have cell service. And there's nothing wrong with technology. There's nothing wrong with all of our advances, but it just makes me wonder how it affects people in the long run making us rely on things other than rely on our skills and ourselves. Do you avoid dirt? Do you have to take a shower every day? Do you have to take a shower twice a day? I'm so aware of my running water in my house. We have several off-grid properties and for 10 years we lived without running water in Alaska and I mean, I just, I never take it for granted that I can turn on a faucet and do my dishes in hot water and take a shower that easy because I've had to work in the past so hard for my water. I just really don't take it for granted. And I think just when you taste a life of a little more hardship, it just prepares you mentally, physically for other challenges in your life. And I think it's just so helpful. It's so good for you, you know? And sometimes I look at myself in the mirror and go, are, are you soft? Do you have it too easy right now? Half of me also thinks, you know, at any moment I could be sick or injured. A close family member can be sick or injured and it would change my life. And I'm just so grateful for my health right now and for this day today. And I just don't want to take things for granted. I don't know about you, but I just need to know where my edges are. So I know I'm alive and fully participating in life every single day. And if that means putting something on that pleases me. You know, I know this is kind of a weird metaphor for what I'm talking about today, but I remember the day I bought this hat. I was in Alaska and I went into the Prospector, which is a really cool kind of, they have really great outdoor clothing and, you know, rugged stuff, right? And I went in there and I saw this hat. And I thought, that is a cool hat. And I put it on and it fit. And I thought it looked okay. And I was really self-conscious about wearing it at first. I was like, you know, not a lot of people wear hats like this. You know, it's, you know, Indiana Jones Safari. Like you can put any kind of meaning you want into hats. Back in the early 20th century, like everybody was wearing hats. I love to see the pictures of everywhere, everybody wearing like really cool hats. Anyway, I felt so self-conscious in, in public with this hat on. Then um, I started wearing these weasel tail earrings. Then a friend of mine at uh, the Tanana Valley Farmer's Market in Fairbanks, he was making these weasel tail earrings. And these were from Ermin. He had caught himself and he tanned them and like he made these earrings. They were super cool. He was, he was supporting himself with his trapping and living such a rustic lifestyle. He was living out of his van in like the North Slope in the middle of winter. And like he had a, a wood stove in there and everything. So I started wearing this hat and these earrings. And you know, I already braid my hair. I'm already like not a young person. I'm not 12 <laughs> braiding my hair. I'm 52 now. I'm still braiding my hair. But anyway, I wasn't 52 then, doesn't matter. I'm an adult braiding my hair with this kind of hat and I put my own little birch bark, you know, hat band on it and stick the feathers that I like in it. And I'm wearing weasel tail earrings and I'm like, you know, 
I'm not blending in. <laughs> I'm not very blendy. And there just came a time when I was like, I was okay with that. Because I was being real, I was being myself, and I was finding the edge of my fashion and my personality, and putting that out there in public. And let's fast forward. I think I've had this hat for, it's 10 years this year, 10 years. And it's became like my signature look, braids, the weasel tail earrings in this hat. That's what I look like a lot of the time. And probably if you ask somebody, what does Brooke Whipple look like? You'd say she wears this hat and she braids her hair all the time and has these weasel tail earrings. And now it's something that I'm proud that I look different. I don't blend into the crowd. And I have these red corduroy pants and I would say the same thing about those, like those red corduroy pants. I don't know, I just liked them. And I remember feeling very self-conscious, even in front of my own family, like feeling judged, feeling like red pants, red corduroy pants. Okay, that's interesting. And you just have to get okay with well, that's the edge of my fashion. <laughs> I know that seemed like a really silly thing, but that's kind of how it starts. And sleeping outside in the woods alone, building something for the first time, going on an adventure that is really challenging and probably outside your scope of skill. I just have nothing but good things to say about those kind of experiences. And I haven't slept outside in the deep woods in a long time, like kind of like in a shelter. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I should probably do that again pretty soon because I don't want to lose that edge. I want that feeling of being so alive, so aware, so in the moment of a vulnerability and infinite possibilities of just today, just this day, what can you do with yourself? How will you live so that when you're on that trail and you can see the cliff on each side and you, and you can see the cliff at the end, that you know you're on the trail and although you may fall off, that trail is there for you to take. And I just don't ever want to lose that. I don't want to get off the trail. And it starts with being mindful about how you're spending your time and how you're spending your day. And I work on it. I struggle. <laughs> I got a really full plate and I'm... I scroll the internet too much. I get carried away. My morning's gone. And I want to write a book and I say that out loud and then I don't write the book. But right now I'm in a season of tackling something with my daughter that I, I don't have any experience with. Real deep experience. And it is such a learning curve. And it's an edge. It is another edge for me. And it just makes me feel so alive to be pushed. And I think if you're not being pushed, either by yourself, mentally, physically, intellectually, you're gonna go off the trail and you'll forget about why you're here and the joy of just being alive. Anyway, I know I'm ranting. <laughs> While I cook this salmon, I just wanna share that with you. Where's your edge? That edge is just so important to me. So I told you this, I'm like working on my physical edge, getting my body strong, super strong, 
being as healthy as I can, being aware of what I'm eating. But more than that, it's a mindfulness of how you spend your day, how you spend your time. What are you doing to better yourself, better the world around you, to be a human that's fully engaged? And that doesn't mean you won't have problems and you won't have setbacks and issues of health and everything else that comes with it. But I feel most alive when I'm I'm on my edge. What is your edge? Leave it in the comments below. I'd love to know what you're working on, what your edge is. I just heard something over there. I don't know what it is. <laughs> very windy so very well could be some branches falling down see anything with man there you go boy something made a noise back here See anything? Go back to the fire. Not even close. Dude, this thing is still cold. I gotta get this in the coals. That'll do it. Probably wondering what the heck about the uh, <laughs> spinach. A little butter in there. And you need a lot because it just goes into just, it be, it's like nothing. Man, I've been really enjoying spinach on the stove lately, just like cooked spinach. It's gonna be a really delicious, healthy meal. Campfire spinach, guys, you excited? <laughs> like tonight is definitely a little spooky out here. It's just so windy and it makes the branches moving in weird ways. You hear crashing, fires kind of swirling around and I just kind of feel like I'm on edge a little and moose seems to be on edge a little bit too. And so you gotta trust your instincts as well. Doing things that make you a little uncomfortable. Stuff falling, there's noises I here off in the distance that I can't really tell what it is. That's okay. Because I got salmon to eat. Yeah, like what was that noise right there? I'm having a hard time getting this thing cooked. I think we might have finally did it. Done. All right, there it is. That's a pretty good looking dinner, guys, huh? And it's so healthy. Oh, man, look at that. That is pretty freaking good. Better say a prayer. I think it's geese. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this beautiful, beautiful weather. The break to come here and have this meal. Feel the wind, hear the geese. Thank you for those watching. Watch over them, Lord. Give them peace and hope and fill their heart with your love. Thank you for this food in Jesus' name. Amen. It's nice. All right, you get the first bite. Sockeye salmon from Alaska. Ready? Open up, take a bite. Oh, you want the spinach instead? No? Okay.
Mm. Oh yeah. A little spinach. Mm. I'm telling you, I'm just loving the spinach lately. A little butter and salt. It is good. Oh, I've been waiting all day for this. Mm. It was a busy day of running errands. I thought about skipping it, but I just don't want to waste a single amazing day of my life. I'm not saying my life is amazing. I'm saying the day that I was given is amazing. My life is amazing though. We'll say that. Oh, so good. So maybe your edge is being outside alone at night. That is a legitimate edge. It's one of the hardest. Last year I did a five fire challenge with things associated with each challenge that you know you could do to maybe try to find your edge. And one of those last things was sleeping outside by yourself and you know you don't you don't win any awards you're not a hero if you did or didn't do it but just in my opinion being able to spend the night in the woods by yourself is just like a huge edge and you get just so many benefits by facing that fear and conquering it so if you want to check that out i'll put a link below to the five fire challenge from last year Maybe you might want to check it out. I love seeing the glow on the trees. It's so cool. There's so many stars tonight, but you can't see them through the camera. This is lovely. Windy, but lovely. All right, I think it's time for Joy Box. Let's see what's in the box. We got a really cool old box here. Kind of hard to see in the dark, but it's really, really cool old box. And so, I also like finding the boxes for the things that's in the box. This box is just neat. I don't know, I don't know what it is. Kinda neat. If you know what this is, leave it in the comments. But I found this this box and I thought yeah this is the one all right so joy box it's a picture <laughs> today I will be happier than a bird with a french fry <laughs> it's like embroidered I thought it was awesome so that's first thing in the joy box. But wait, there's more. Okay. Isn't that just the cutest? I don't know. It just spoke to me. I found this on eBay. <laughs> I've had it for years. This is, an, this is an oldie. What's it say on the back? Raven and the Roses by Deborah Gregg, 07. Yeah had this a long time. I got into a kick of like tiny little paintings because I love tiny things. And this one's just been around a while. It's been beat up, but I love it still. So that's what's in the box, guys. Two pictures tonight. Moose is barking. What's it, buddy? Moose man! Come on! Lucy! I don't know where he went. Moose! Come on, buddy. Good boy. Good boy, it's okay. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, the good boy. We'll garden the place, huh? Garden us? Gives you good boy. It's always freaky when he starts barking. 
Well, that's gonna do it for me. Hope you liked the video, guys. See you in the next one. This girl in the woods, she gone. Oh, don't forget to get outside and get happy.